So this is the new Nanomax multivariable process control. It has four different processes. It is air pressure, water level, water temperature, and water flow rate. The system allows us to do process control or perform experiments of process control using a touchscreen interface and various industrial sensors that are mounted in the system. The Nanomax has a heating element in one of its water control tanks, a cooling element in another tank. It has liquid level and air pressure sensors mounted throughout the system. The system has control valves also mounted in the system that allow us to control flow rates between the two tanks. The HMI is a touchscreen interface that allows us to monitor all the various sensors on the system in real time, as well as graph trending information about the process and the process control. The HMI allows us to manually control valves associated with the process and allows us to monitor the rates of sensor change on a line display. The Nanomax also allows us to change uh, P, I, and D for proportional, integral, and derivative control of all four processes so that students have an opportunity to work with a control system that is multi-variable and multi-flexible based on the process at hand. The system is powered by a Siemens HMI uh, Ethernet based PLC and has industrial controls such as contactors, relays, and standard wiring you'd find in an industrial environment. The door is easily locked so that students don't have any access to the electronics for safety. The system has two drain valves in the lower corner and various control valves throughout the piping on the Nanomax. All the valves are labeled and the content tells students what valves to set, when and how to perform various experiments. The experiments are all skills based as tradition with Jobmaster, so students will be able to learn a bit of information about process control in the content and then we'll perform a skill that's associated with the information that they've learned. We have two automatic control valves that can be programmed via the PLC. Uh, various sensors, we have a flow control sensor, a differential pressure sensor, a standard pressure sensor that's capable of up to six bar of operation, bypass valves for safety, this is our fluid level tank, so it measures the fluid level on a sight glass that's on the side. It's also used to store cool water as the system is uh, charging the water for low temperature. We also have a heat exchanger in the back corner and uh, a 15 gallon and 7 gallon tank for water storage. We have a small refrigeration unit on the bottom of the system to chill the water and then inside of the larger tank in the back we have uh, two heating elements drawing about a total of about 800 watts that allow us to heat the water on the back side. For easy filling and draining we have both uh, connections where you can connect a water system to the, the Nanomax and fill the tanks via that. Uh, we also have quick release for draining on the bottom of the Nanomax or if you'd like uh, you can just take the Nanomax, it's on wheels and you can roll it out to a location that's easy for you to both fill and drain the Nanomax. Okay, so the first process we're going to look at is liquid level. Liquid level is a process where we try to maintain a certain level of liquid in TK103, which is the liquid level tank. Uh, this would be used in a process where you would need a reserve of liquid and you'd want to keep a tank filled to a certain amount, or you need to mix fluids at a, different, at a certain rate or liquids at a certain rate. So we'll fire that up. 
Uh, again, using our touchscreen interface, we have a view of all that is involved in the process. And our focus here is this tank right here and our level of millimeters of H2O for pressure differential inside of the liquid level tank. So I'm going to touch the touch screen and this turns on the pump. You can hear the pump uh, running in the background. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set first, we can set a manual value. So if we want our valve to control the liquid level to be open a certain amount, I can just type that in and the controller will automatically open this valve right here to a certain percentage and the amount of water will rise or fall based on that. And you can see right here, this is the pressure sensor value and right now it's rising. So the problem with doing a manual value, value is has demands change on the system, it can cause instability in the amount of water that's in the tank or it can cause the water to slowly rise or slowly fall. So we can move on and we can do automatic. So we have proportional integral and derivative, our PID. It's a reset controller style system and I'm going to hit type in P, so I'm going to put a value of 1. These are pre-tested values. I have all these values preset in the curriculum. And I'm going to, I got P and I I'm going to use. I'm not going to use D on this, on this case. And then I'm going to set a set point of 200. And then I will engage automatic mode. And you can see uh, on the chart we have a black line representing where we're actually at. We have a red line representing the target of where we want to go to. And as the system's building up, you can see it came up to 200.2. Uh, and if you look at the sight glass, the sight glass will show how much water is in, this, in the uh, the unit at the time in relationship to the value of 200 millimeters of H2O. Now if I want to change that, I can just type in a new value. Uh, you hear a little noise of the, of the pressure changes. The blue line is representing my set point. Again, my red line is representing the value of the sensor and the black line represents the current status of the valve. And you can see my set point my target and my valve value all settling at a nice, uh, a nice point. And if I interrupt the controller and the flow rate requirements, you can see the value will change here, but after a moment it will stabilize again without any interrupt interaction uh, from me. next process we're going to look at is liquid flow control. So this is the amount of water flowing through uh, a, set, a set of pipes and there's various reasons you'd want to control this, especially for like mixing ratios in a chemical engineering system. Again, we have an example of what is being interacted with on the uh, Nanomax and I'm going to turn on the pump again, go to the trending graphs, and then now I'm going to set an example manual value. So I can just type in, say, 50%. And if I open this control valve 50%, it will allow water to flow from the pump into our flow valve, in through the top of our heat exchanger, and then out the spigot. So let's try a larger value that didn't do quite as much as I was hope, hoping for. Okay, so we're running at 70% on the valve and say our target's three. 
So if I change anything, our flow rate will change. Like if I constrict the system or try to draw more off of the system, it will change our flow rate. So again, I can go into automatic mode and via some pre-tested numbers. And a preset set point, say I want it to be three. I can enter automatic mode and the control system will automatically react to what it's currently sensing and then adjust the flow rate uh, to what our target is. And again, we can see uh, the blue line representing our set point, a red line representing our sensor's measured value, which is our flow meter. And we can measure, see our um, valve's value as well. So the valve is opening to about 60%. And on the other side, we can see our target set point is three. And you're getting a nice scrolling picture and you can see the process happen live. So now if I change my set point to want some, wanting something more like four, I can do that. Again, we see the change. Uh, you get the nice lines to easily follow where we're going and what our target is. And you can see uh, our set point re reaching what we want, our valve reaching what it wants to be, and our uh, sensor reaching and reading what it, we want it to read and then stabilizing out. Okay, next we'll take a look at air pressure process. So I'm going to click air pressure or touch it. Again, we're showing what we're actively working on and we're basically looking at the air pressure tank. There's an air pressure gauge at the top of the tank and we're basically what we're doing is we're feeding in air and we're trying to maintain a certain set point of air pressure inside the tank despite disturbances that are created by outside sources. So like before, I can, can manually control the valve to make it lose air up to a certain point or completely empty the tank. So I can, you know, if I open the valve up 75%, we get down to a quarter bar of air pressure, which is the unit we're taking our measurements in. It's also the unit the sensor uh, natively gives feedback in. And again, if I want my air system to run at a certain air pressure, I can set a PI and D value or just a P value for this case. And I can say I want 1.5 bar of air pressure, set it to automatic and um, we can see the graph of it quickly matching my demand and request and now we currently have 1.5 ish bar of air pressure inside the system seems like a very simple experiment but it really gets the job done for trying to teach process control with air pressure so the last process we're going to look at is liquid temperature control. And liquid temperature control, basically we have a refrigeration unit connected to TKO2, uh, a little air conditioner. And then in TKO1 we have a set of heaters, heater coils, and we're going to heat the water in TKO1 and chill the water in TKO2. And then up in the top crossbar we're going to use the heat exchanger and exchange cold water heat and hot water heat in order to reach a targeted water temperature of the water exiting through this TT106 location. So I'm going to turn on the pump one, pump two, the uh, heater and the cooling unit. Actually the cooling unit's already at temperature so can't turn that on. And then I'm going to, I can again manually adjust the valve. The valve being controlled is this one right here. And it's basically determining how much cold water at what rate is being exchanged through the heat exchanger. So if I open that up, I can cause the water temperature to adjust. And 
and uh, we can see that in this particular unit we have an additional an additional setting and we can look at all the temperatures and the graphing of all the different temperatures so we have the various sensors on the system and we can see the value at the valve which is TT06 we can see the hot water entering the system which is entering in at 23 and then we can see the two temperatures at uh, TT102 and TT103 which are the two side entrances from the cold water tank. So if we cool the water we can see the water temperature is changing and what we can do is attempt to cool the hot water by putting the system in automatic mode and it will automatically adjust for the temperature that we want. So we'll say 29 degrees and it's Celsius and then I'll hit automatic and it will open the valve and adjust on the fly uh, hot and cold water.